Okay, so here's the big question. Are there many paths to... If Oprah asked you this question... Okay, so here's the big question. Are there many paths to get to the one God? How would you answer? Oh, okay. There are numerous ways that Christians answer this question. Oprah, who has claimed to be a Christian. I, I am a Christian. That is my faith. I'm not asking you to be a Christian. If you want to be one, I can show you how. Says that believing in Jesus is not necessary. But it is not required. I have respect for all faiths. All faiths. When Oprah says that she has respect for all faiths, she is communicating that people of all faiths can be right with God. But obviously, Oprah isn't at all a trustworthy authority on this. One of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world, that there are millions of ways to be a then human how being do you please God? And, and many ways, no, but many paths no to what you call God. That and her path crazy. might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light. But her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. Somewhere between 45% and 65% of so-called evangelical Christians are convinced that Jesus is not the only way to heaven. This goes counter to our tradition, our theology, and scripture, as you know. But here we are, as evangelical Christians, defending the exclusivity of Christ. When Oprah asked Joel Osteen this question. Okay, so here's the big question. Are there many paths to get to the one God? Osteen gave a convoluted answer. Well, I believe, Oprah, that there, I believe that Jesus is the way to the one God. But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. And, you know, you don't know how Jesus would reveal himself to somebody. So I'm not into excluding people. Jesus can reveal himself to anybody. Osteen answers that Jesus is the way to God, but then he qualifies this with, But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. But the Bible teaches that there's really only one path to Jesus, repentance and faith. Osteen continues with these extremely vague qualifications when he says that, You know, you don't know how Jesus would reveal himself to somebody. What exactly does he mean? The Bible teaches that Christians need to bring the good news to people so they can hear about Jesus and be saved. If there's another way that people can be saved, neither the Bible nor Osteen tell us about the other way. Also, when Osteen says, So I'm not into excluding people. He seems to suggest that we can't ultimately know if a person is not saved. But it seems clear that anyone who does not repent and believe in Jesus is not saved. T.D. Jakes gave a similarly convoluted answer to Oprah. Are there many paths or different paths to God? Jake started his answer with this unrelated comment. <laughs> Great question. Let me answer that uh, this way. First, I believe one of the great lessons I think that we have today is to live in a country that allows us to have various religious notions. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that I don't have Congress deciding what I'm going to believe. Then Jake said that people find God in many different ways. Having said that, and with that tolerance and celebrating that tolerance, I believe that we all take different paths. Some people find God in church. Some people find God at the house. Some people find God in their bedroom. Some people find God in prison. There may be different paths to God, but at the end of the day, there's one God and there's one door. I believe in the Christian that Christ is that door. What exactly does Jakes mean when he says that Jesus is the door? Jakes is being very vague and he does not mention repentance and faith at all. Jakes then emphasizes that Christians can miss Christ as the door. Are all the religions leading to that path, or is only Christianity leading to that path? Well, I think you can get in Christianity and miss that path if you're not careful. Right. This is why pastors stand up today, and when they preach on a topic that's controversial, 
Their message usually dies the death of a thousand qualifications. Finally, Jake says he hopes people from other religions will cross over and see Christ as Lord. And I think that many people start in other religions and at some point they, my prayer and my hope is that they will cross over. And I'm a cross over and, and see Christ as Lord, even if it's at the final moment. I believe he's the door. While there's nothing completely wrong with what Jake said, his answer seems to be unnecessarily convoluted, with so many qualifiers that the real answer is hard to find within all that he said. Rob Bell suggests that love will win and even people who did not have faith in Jesus will be saved. Gandhi's in hell. He is. And someone knows this for sure. The good news is actually better than that. Better than we could ever imagine. The good news is that love wins. In an interview, Bell did not deny his support for universalism which is the belief that everyone will eventually be saved, with or without conscious faith in Jesus. It, it comes out that you're not agnostic on this, Rob. It comes out that you do believe everyone will ultimately be saved. Of course, you acknowledge that's just one in a variety of options. Sure. But, it, but it sounds like that's the one you prefer, or, or you, you're most convinced by. Do you long for that to happen? William Lane Craig teaches that it would be unfair for God to judge people who have never heard of Jesus. Now, that raises then further difficult theological questions, namely, well, what about those then who have never heard of Christ? How are they going to be judged? It would be unfair for God to judge them for not having placed their faith in Christ when they've never heard of Christ. And God is fair. So, what do you do with those people? However, because every human is guilty of sin, it is completely fair for God to judge even people who have never heard of Jesus. Craig also teaches that people can be saved through Christ without having conscious faith in Christ. And it seems to me that the answer of the New Testament is that God judges people on the basis of the light that they have that those who have only the light of God's general revelation in nature and conscience will be judged on the basis of their response to that. Those who have the light of his special revelation and the gospel will be judged on the basis of their response to that. Now that doesn't mean that anyone can be saved apart from the atoning death of Christ. It just means that it would be possible that someone could be a beneficiary of Christ's atoning death without having a conscious knowledge of Christ. Craig uses Job and Moses as examples of people who were saved apart from conscious faith in Christ. What about the, the verses in Scripture that say you have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved? What do you well, mean? what that verse says in Romans is, if you believe in your heart, uh, or if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That states a sufficient condition of salvation, not a necessary condition, okay. right? It says, if you do these things, you will be saved. And that's true. But Job didn't do those things. Moses didn't do those things. So that's not a necessary condition. That's a sufficient condition. However, there is an enormous difference between Old Testament saints who had faith in a coming Messiah and non-Christians today who have never heard of Christ. Since Jesus has already come, now people need to be told about Jesus so that they can be saved. Bodhi Bauckham explains that the Old Testament is actually all about Jesus. Jesus does not say, you should have understood my redemptive work on the cross because of what I've been telling you all this time. He says, you should have understood it because you have the Old Testament. Balkum explains that, in a sense, Moses actually did believe in and write about Jesus. In John chapter 5, what do we have recorded there in John chapter 5, at the end of John chapter 5? Listen to these words, beginning of verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. 
for if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Moses wrote of you? What are you talking about, Jesus? Do you mean that we can go to the Pentateuch and find you and your redemptive work? Do you mean that when we go to the Old Testament, we don't have to read it like Aesop's fables? It's precisely what he means. What this means is that people who were saved in the Old Testament were saved through faith in the coming Jesus. This is not at all true for non-Christians who have never heard of Christ today. Uh, I've often told the story of, of a very embarrassing and painful situation I had as a young college student. She was a woman and she was overtly hostile to Christianity and made no bones about it in our English class. Well, on this one occasion, uh, she singled me out in front of the whole class and she said, Mr. Sprawl? I said, yes. She said, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to God? And so when she said, Mr. Sproul, do you believe that Jesus is the only way to God? I sort of mumbled, well, I, yes, kept my head. Well, she heard it. And as I anticipated, she exploded in fury. And she said something to this effect. She said, she was enraged. She said, that is the most bigoted, narrow-minded, arrogant statement I have ever heard. How can you think that Jesus Christ is the only way to God? And I said, well, what, here's my problem. I said, I didn't come at this thing looking for the only way. I'm as American as you are. You know, I, I, I'm, not, look, I, I'm not looking for some narrow view of things. I said, but I, I got to the place where I was persuaded that Jesus was, in fact, the Son of God. And then I read in the New Testament that this one of whom I've persuaded was the Son of God opened his mouth and said things like this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Now, I understand what a universal negative is. When Jesus says, no man comes to the Father except by me, he's eliminated all other possible options. Jesus, the same Jesus said, I am the door through which men must enter. I am the good shepherd. The rest are hirelings. All of the others are thieves and robbers trying to violently break into my Father's kingdom where they have no right. I said, don't you see, I saw that, and the one who's the Son of God and, and His apostles are saying to me that there is no other name under heaven through which men must be saved than through the name of Christ. I said, don't you see that if I believe that Christ is one way, I have to believe that He's the only way. Or else I have to believe that this one who is one way is dead wrong when he claims to be the only way. And if he's dead wrong when he claims to be the only way, I'd be foolish to think that he's even one way. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a deacon, a husband, a father, a software engineer, and an amateur maker of videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help me in my mission to spread biblical truth, just subscribe and watch these videos until the end, which will help the YouTube algorithm recommend these videos to more people. I'm committed to using the skills and gifts God has given me to glorify Him and communicate biblical truth, and I would be so grateful if you would come be a part of what I'm building. You can visit my website at joyfulexile.com to learn more about me and what I'm working on. I hope you're having a blessed day. I will see you in the next video, and remember, this world is not our home.